Nowadays, in almost every motorsport discipline, onboard cameras have become a crucial part of the racing experience. They don't just give us a starting view of the action, they also help us understand the track better, spot our mistakes and find the ways to improve our driving. Karting isn't different, we often mount cameras in various places, on the front panel, the radiator, the driver's helmet and more. Each camera angle offers a unique perspective. Some are more technical, perfect for analyzing lines and breaking points, while others give us the idea of the steering performance. But besides helping us understand what is happening on the track, where's another side of the medal? Aerodynamics. Modern cameras are compact and lightweight, but they still disturb airflow and create extra drag. And in karting, where every tenth of a second counts, even a small change in aerodynamics can make a real difference. This got me thinking, which camera placement is actually the most aerodynamic and the most informative? To find out, Today we are going to test, in my opinion, 5 of the most popular camera placement spots on the radiator, on the radiator's cap, on the driver's helmet and on the front panel. We will measure and compare the aerodynamic impact to see which setup is the most efficient. For this simulation I will be using a Beer S18. We will start from camera placed on the radiator. Overall, the aerodynamics don't change significantly, but there are some notable changes around the radiator zone. Here we can see that the camera creates a high pressure zone, which leads to stagnation and causes a small wick behind it. This effect is also visible from the top view. In terms of performance, the drag coefficient increases by about 8%, compared to the regular setup. Now, what about the information we get from this angle? From this position we can see the steering close movements, a good view of the truck ahead and depending on where the radiator is placed, we can even see the movement of one leg, in this case we can observe the brake pedal. So overall this is a pretty solid and useful view. But what about the second mounting option, placing the camera on the radiator's cap. Starting with the aerodynamic side, we again see a high pressure zone forming an awake behind the camera. The airflow situation looks very similar to the first opposition. The same goes for the drag coefficient. In this setup, drag rises by 9%, but the difference is really small compared to the first case. Now, in terms of information we can gain, the camera is positioned slightly higher than before. Again, we can see the steering wheel movement, the drag view, and this time, depending on the radiator position, we can observe the throttle pedal. However, there is one very important thing to keep in mind. Placing the camera directly on the radiator cap, you must make sure it is properly secured. If the camera isn't placed accurately, the cap can accidentally loosen during a practice session or race, fly away or cause water to leak from the radiator. This can lead to engine overheating and serious engine problems. I have experienced this issue myself a few times when mounting cameras on the cap. That's why I highly recommend mounting the camera near the cap rather than directly on it to avoid this risk. Moving to the third camera mounting option. We have the front panel setup, where the camera is placed on the top of the front panel. In this case, it is placed pretty high. From an aerodynamic point of the view, we can see a small high pressure zone forming around the camera and a tiny wake behind it. Compared to the previous positions, the drag impact is much smaller. In this case, the drag coefficient only rises by 2%, meaning it has very minimal effect on aerodynamics. But what about informativeness, which is the main reason why we use cameras in the first place. There is no doubt that this position gives us the clearest view of the track ahead and the racing lines the driver is taking. Moreover, from this spot we cannot see how aggressively the driver is steering or how they are working with the pedals. So while it's a great choice for an overall track view, it's less useful if you wanted a detailed analysis of the driver's behavior. Now let's move on the final camera placements, the ones around the helmet region. First we'll start with the chin placement. This particular area is actually quite aerodynamic. Of course it creates an aerial stagnation zone and a slightly larger high pressure area compared to no camera at all. But in terms of numbers it's still very efficient. Drag coefficient increases by only about 2%, which is exactly the same as with the front panel. In terms of informativeness, this spot performs even better. From the chin position we get a clear view of the track, the steering wheel motion and even the pedals. Overall this is a really good spot. But what about placing the camera on the top of the helmet? 
Personally, I thought this would be a terrible option aerodynamically, but I was wrong. Yes, it does create a noticeable high pressure zone and a larger wake behind it, which is visible both from the side and top views. But in terms of aerodynamic penalty, it's not as bad as expected. The drag coefficient increases by about 9%, which is similar to the radiator and radiator cap placements. But from this angle, compared to the radiator mounted cameras, we actually get more information, including the track, pedal movements, steering wheel action and sometimes even a glimpse of what is happening behind, if the driver turns the head. However, helmet placed cameras do have some serious drawbacks. The footage can be very unstable during driving. Plus, mounting extra weight on the helmet can shift the center of the gravity and even cause neck pain over longer sessions. Still, in terms of the amount of the information captured, this spot remains very informative. And speaking of helmet mounted cameras, today we also have something even better. Cameras placed inside the helmet itself. If you have ever watched Formula 1, you have probably seen the driver's eye view where a tiny camera is integrated directly into the helmet. From an aerodynamic point of view, this is the best option. No external elements added, meaning zero impact on airflow. It also keeps all benefits of the head placed camera, track view, steering, pedals, we have affecting our performance. But the main downside is that the internal cameras often have a lower video quality compared to traditional action cameras. There's no doubt that cameras are absolutely crucial for analyzing our driving and improving lap times. But as we have seen, choosing the right placement isn't just about getting the best angle, it's also about minimizing aerodynamic penalties that could impact our performance. Each camera position has its own advantages and disadvantages. Each one provides different source of data, which can help us understand different aspects of the driving experience.